My journey to systems, system science, it, which I think is one of the most profound aspects or body of knowledge that I believe every human being should learn in the modern world. And I think before you even teach people reading, writing, and arithmetic, you should teach people system science. So today, after just one year, we have close to 100,000 people have gone through this training. So we have hairdressers, electricians, engineers, doctors who learn this, and they're able to teach it to others. So I was fascinated why there was this political system over here. And then over here is a, a woman who has no training in medicine who's able to heal people by observing their face, observing their pulse, and able to come up with things. So that led my journey when I came to the United States, working as a 14-year-old kid as a full-time research fellow at Rutgers Medical School, interested in sleep systems, why babies were dying in their sleep, you know, in the, in the, because of my interest in medicine from my grandmother. But I also created the world's first email system. And email, by the way, is not simply the exchange of text messages. It is a system, inbox, outbox, folders, all these interconnected parts. And it was I, as a 14-year-old kid who invented that system, named it email. And systems biology was finally the West medical system awakening to the fact that they weren't taking a holistic systems approach to the body. Indian traditional systems of medicine had a whole language for understanding the body as a system. Unfortunately, they're not able to explain it to the West. So people just think it's a bunch of hocus pocus snake oil. Namaskar. Truth, freedom, and health. Three different entities, yet they all come together in a way that we perhaps don't realize it, but we are already experiencing it. To know more about this, let's welcome Dr. Shiva Ayadurai, who has done a lot of leading edge, tip of the spear research on this particular topic. Dr. Shiva, namaskar and welcome to Guru channel. How are you, sir? Great to be here, uh, Sri. So uh, Dr. Shiva, take it away. Truth, freedom and health. How are these related? How did you stumble on this? And then we can, uh, you know, play a video where you're actually explaining what, uh, you know, you've seen so far and so on and so forth. So Sri, um, as I've shared with you, you know, my journey to systems, system science, it, which I think is one of the most profound aspects or body of knowledge that I believe every human being should learn in the modern world. And I think before you even teach people reading, writing, and arithmetic, you should teach people system science. The good news is it took me about 50 years and I've organized this curriculum uh, in, a, in a way that anyone can learn it and anyone can in fact teach it. So today after just one year, we have close to 100,000 people have gone through this training. So we have hairdressers, electricians, engineers, doctors who learn this and they're able to teach it to others. So it's called the dual pedagogy model. And we've created a movement about this. So where did this come from? Well, um, you know that I grew up originally in India right. you know, as a child and I was exposed to a system called the caste system. I was also exposed to another system called the Indian Siddha medical system. OK, and even though those appear like two di different disparate systems, that got my fascination as a kid in trying to understand political systems, why there was oppression, why there was these different types of inequities. But also I saw my grandmother who practiced one of the most ancient forms of Indian medicine called Siddha, which is practiced in the south and the north. They call it Ay Ayurveda. Um, but these systems of medicine have existed for centuries or tens of thousands of years. So I was fascinated why there was this political system over here. And then over here is a, a woman who has no training in medicine, who's able to heal people by observing their face, observing their pulse and able to come up with things. So that led my journey when I came to the United States, which I didn't know as a kid at that time in this dual path in understanding systems or multiple paths. So when I was a kid, I started uh, working as a 14 year old kid as a full time research fellow at Rutgers Medical School, interested in sleep systems, why babies were dying in their sleep, you know, in the, in the, because of my interest in medicine from my grandmother. But I also created the world's first email system. And email, by the way, is not simply the exchange of text messages, it is the system, inbox, outbox, folders, all these interconnected parts. And it was I, as a 14 year old kid who invented that system, named it email. And any controversy around that, there is no controversy because any controversy comes in from people not understanding that I never claimed to invent the simple transport of messages, which is electronic messaging. I created the system as we know today. And when I came to MIT in 1981, I was still very interested in medicine, 
went through many, many different degree programs, four different degrees, studying all different kinds of systems. But I also got involved in political systems. You know, I created one of the first, you know, anti-establishment newspapers on campus, started understanding, you know, war, you know how people got into war, uh, the electoral systems. And that led into my journey running for office in 2018. Engineers, scientists, inventors like myself are not supposed to run for office. We're supposed to stay in our lane. And in 20, 2007, before I ran for office, this is how all these things sort of merged in together. In, in 2003, I went back to MIT to do my PhD in a field called systems biology. And systems biology was finally the West medical system awakening to the fact that they weren't taking a holistic systems approach to the body. Indian traditional systems of medicine had a whole language for understanding the body as a system. Unfortunately, they're not able to explain it to the West. So people just think it's a bunch of hocus pocus snake oil. So, but having myself experienced the traditional systems of medicine, having gotten all those degrees at MIT, in 2003, I came back to do my PhD in a field called systems biology. And systems biology basically came to the reckoning that Western medicine was taking the wrong approach by thinking every disease was from a gene, you know? And this is called a reductionist model of looking at the world, which is the opposite of a systems approach. Reductionism said, oh, this one single thing must cause this thing. So by 2003, we had mapped out the human genome. We found out we only had 23,000 genes and the same number of genes as a worm, a small worm. So that was confounding because how could a worm have the same number of genes as a human being? Shouldn't we have more genes? And this was a reductionist scientific approach of Western science, Western biology, um, thinking that complexity is a function of the number of parts. But we know that I could give some person 10 marbles and I could give another person 10 marbles and one person, if I gave them some string, could connect those marbles just in a linear line. That's a very simple system. Someone else may use more string and connect them into some very, where every marble is connected to another. So it's the interconnections that make a complex system. Okay. So what it turns out is that in biology, it is the interconnections between the genes, which are called molecular pathways. It just so turns out we have more complex molecular pathways than a worm does, same number of genes. So this led biology in 2003 to a field called systems biology. I came back to MIT and did a PhD um, in mathematically trying to model all the complex systems of the human cell. And that resulted in a very significant innovation called Cytosol, C-Y-T-O-S-O-L-V, which was the first platform and still the only platform which we can model mechanistically complex molecular pathways we've used to discover a combination therapy for cancer. We just published in the leading journal, Nature Neuroscience, mapping out all the neurovascular diseases. We just uh, published a major article in cancers. So we're making headways and major institutions like Stanford and UCLA come to us and we can do the work of 30, 40 graduate students much faster and cheaper. So Cytosol is a revolutionary way to take a systems approach to biology. So anyway, I discovered or invented that in 2007. Um, and then after I did that, Sri, I had now gone through this journey where I've become a, a, a you know, preeminent systems biologist, got all the degrees at MIT. So no one can sort of attack me if I now want to go study Indian medicine, okay? If I just went study, they would say, oh, this guy's a fringe scientist. So I took three years off during 2007 and 10. I went back to India and I said, okay, now with all this knowledge I have from a systems approach, let me now point that skill set what is this indian system of medicine why does it work what is it so by the way in engineering systems theory there are three phenomena that you learn and every engineer listening to this if you've taken a course in control systems if you've taken a course in general systems theory you'll understand that's called the phenomenon of transport conversion and storage transport conversion and storage the movement of information, matter, and energy is transport. Conversion is the conversion aspects of information, matter, and energy. Like your digestive system in your stomach converts one form of matter to another form, to energy, right? A diesel engine does that. Transport is movement like the wind, right? And 
the third part of it is what's called storage or structure. Like in this room here, it's a structural components that keep me insulated and protected or in your body, it's your bones and your skin. Anyway, transport, conversion and storage. So when I went back to India, the problem with 99.9999% of the Ayurvedic people and Siddha people, when you go to them, they have a system of medicine where they characterize your body as Vata, Pitta or Kapha or combinations. And if you say, hey, what is Vata, Pitta, Kapha? They'll say, well, it's this and this. They'll talk some spiritual words and no one knows what they're saying. They can't actually explain it. And the big breakthrough I made is I found out that Vat, Pit, and Kaf is transport, conversion, and storage, period. And, and it is directly related to control systems theory, where there are nine phenomenon that if you take an engineering systems course, you learn. And I was literally able to map, create the Rosetta Stone, not only mapping transport, conversion, and storage, to Vata, Pitta, and Kapha, but also the entire system of yoga and medicine to engineering systems theory. And I wrote a paper on it in 2012 called the Engineering Systems Foundation of Eastern Medicine. Okay, so I had made a major breakthrough in integrating the Eastern systems of medicine, which are really not a system of medicine. They're really an engineering approach to understanding the body as a system. And my view became that these ancient rishis and yogis recognize it's very hard to understand the body at the molecular level. It gets too complicated. So they abstracted it to a different knowledge base. Vat, Pitt, and Kaf were transport, conversion, and storage. So there are certain foods that increase transport, caffeine, certain foods that support conversion, ginger, cumin, certain foods that support your structure, your bones, right? Things like oils and fats, right? So on. So I was able to take the entire Eastern Indian system of medicine and decipher it away from the gurus, right? Away from the religious people who frankly had made it follow me. And I democratized that whole system of yoga and medicine. I created a tool called your body, your system. So you don't have to fly all the way halfway around the world to India. And I created a whole course program out of it called System Health. When I came back to the United States, it was the most popular lecture series I used to teach at MIT systems biology and traditional systems of medicine. And then I went on to create another course at MIT called systems visualization, which was the most popular elective. Everyone from the engineering school took it. So what I had done was I bridged the worlds of Eastern systems of medicine with engineering control systems theory. And I used to teach a course in this room here. In fact, I've trained people, tens of thousands of doctors, people all over the world. And then in 2012, as you, uh, 2018, I stepped my foot into the electoral systems of running for office. I had to put that on hold. And the biggest aha moment I had was that in politics, what's going on is that you have people fighting for freedom. The First Amendment, the Second Amendment, typically people call those people like rednecks and, and the freedom you know, movement, right? The 1A movement or the 2A movement. And those people look and feel a certain way, right? And they're co called conservatives or Republicans. And that's over here. And then over here, you have the nerds or the venture capitalists saying, we need innovation. We need more science, right? And then over here, you have the yoga people talking about non-GMO foods and, um, you know, we need organic foods, right? The health movement or yoga. And what I found was each of these three groups looked different, acted different, had different political aspirations, right? The freedom group were typically conservatives. The yoga people are typically, you know, sort of, Democrat liberals, you know, yoga Nazis, some people call them. And over here, you had your nerds, right? Truth and science, etc. But the biggest aha moment I had was I said, you know what, when you apply the science of systems, you realize that freedom, what is freedom? It's transport, movement of information, matter and energy. And I saw before my eyes when I started to expose the election systems, when I was exposing Fauci, right, that the the big tech guys would shut me down. What they were really doing was cutting off freedom, cutting off transport of information, cutting off transport of people moving around, quote unquote, vaccine passports, cutting off move, transport, con, transport, which is freedom. So transport is a direct analogy to freedom, which is Vata, the principle of motion. So what is conversion? Well, co conversion on the physical body is di digestion or Pitta, but conversion also represents the ability 
to take ideas in the open discourse debate. So if you cut off freedom, you can't really do science. But if you have open discourse, you can take crazy ideas, hypotheses, and through the scientific method, you get to truth. Truth is really a process. What Newton discovered yesterday was later on augmented with the speed of light, and that became the general theory of relativity, right? It wasn't Newton was wrong, but it had to be refined. So conversion is a process of taking ideas and refining them to truth. So, but you can't do that without freedom. So truth is the conversion aspect, the pitta aspect. And health is the infrastructure which supports freedom and truth, right? It's a vessel. So if you don't have your physical health or economic health or infrastructure health, you can't really fight for freedom or you can't really do science. So if you think about a government, they need freedom. They need innovation and science, which is truth. And then they need infrastructure, physical infrastructure, that's health. So I had come up to this profound understanding that both pith, cough, transport, conversion, storage, truth, freedom, and health are integrated. So I want to play you a little video. So what I ended up doing was I recognize our movement for Senate started transforming to not to just an electoral movement, but to a broader movement to arm people with a fundamental science, the science of systems that we live in a world now that there's, you don't know what's true anymore. Left says this, right? Everything becomes pro-vax, anti-vax, pro-mask, anti-mask, pro-Ukraine, anti-Ukraine, pro-Russia, right? How do you as a human being now get beyond this dialectic? And that led me to creating the movement for truth, freedom, and health. And it, it's about going beyond left and right. So I want to play you. So let me go over here, Sri. Yeah. So people go to vashiva.com. You can bring it up. What we have done is on the website, it's, you know, people know Dr. Shiva. So when they go to the site, first of all, the goal is to inspire people. They can see many different things I've been involved in, Sri, from the invention of email, from running for Senate, you know, from Cytosol, which is this technology we created for systems approach to biology, and then the integration of Eastern and Western medicine, systems health, you know, uh, echo mail. We created a whole different way of understanding food systems, so on. So people can get inspired that there's a, when I look at the world, I take a systems approach. Then there's a video up on there, which talks about my journey to systems. And then I have this video that I want to play for you on why we live in a point in history where we have to learn the science of systems. So let me play that uh, right now. Yeah. We have allowed our country to be taken over from within. And the end goal is you will have a homogenized world where we will become slaves because there is a condition among the elites that really thinks they're better than you deep down inside them that you don't deserve the freedoms you have they don't mm -hmm. this reality is what people need to wake up to and we need to all unite working people there's only one movement that can do that mm -hmm. and that is the movement that we started creating here in massachusetts the movement for truth freedom and health look i've been a student of politics since i was a four-year-old kid setting revolutionary movements, left wing, right wing. There is a physics, there's a nuclear science to destroying the establishment. To build a bridge, you need to understand Newton's equation. You need to understand the laws of gravity. You need to understand Poisson's ratio. There is a way to build a revolution. And that's why I put this together. My goal is to train a army of truth, freedom and health leaders. We don't need followers like social media, we need leaders, but they, they need training because the educational system does not teach them history, nothing. So in three hours, that's what I've started doing. That's the solution. We wow. got to train people first with understanding what a system is. The second is understanding the interconnection between truth, freedom and health. Freedom is the ability to move freely, communicate freely, right? Talk freely. Without freedom, you cannot convert ideas, hypothesis into truth, which is science. And without freedom, you can't really get to truth. And without truth, you make up fake problems, and fake solutions, which means you destroy our health. And without health, which is the infrastructure of us and our body, you can't fight for freedom. Third concept is it has to be bottoms up, working people, people who work united. And what the right wing has done is whenever you say working people unite, that must be communist. Meanwhile, they've let the Democrats run unions, which suppress workers, completely corrupt. But when you look at the arc of American history, it's been when working people came up. We need to go local. Every solution I'm coming up with is a part of this movement. We're giving the science, which is the truth, and then we tell people what they can do on the ground. Like with election fraud, you don't need to wait for some lawyer. Our goal is to train people, Dave, to go local, to go local, to go local, fight locally. 
Forget lawyers, forget politicians, forget celebrities. You've got to learn politics, and there is a science to it. They lock us down, we should be ready to shut them down. And the fourth part of this principle is a not so obvious establishment. So when you look at a system, there's always something that disturbs you from getting to your goal. Well, the biggest disturbance is a not so obvious establishment, which are those people who claim they're for you on the left and the right. The Al Sharptons who tell black people I'm for you. The Tucker Carlson's. Do you think any true anti-establishment person will ever be on Fox or CNN? I don't think so. They both mislead working people back into the establishment. Without this solid understanding of political physics and theory, you're screwed. You're gonna follow on the, the left wing, Bernie Sanders, oh, he said something, or Robert Kennedy, scumbags. Or you're gonna follow you know, some right wing talk show host. They're not gonna lead us to liberation, it's us. And that political physics, it's a nuclear science of change. Bottoms up. We have to organize to understand that there is people who talk a good game and then look at what they actually do, left and right. I'm sorry, Sean Hannity may say some good things, but I don't see the urgency in his voice to get something done. And it can only come when you weaponize yourself with the right knowledge. You need to be able to identify a rat. You know, Christ didn't go after the Romans, right? It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who screwed him up. His own quote unquote people. And that's where we're at. So these four concepts I've built into a curriculum. People can go to vashiva.com and it's an educational program. We need to train people in political theory. You need to have physics. And I've created that curriculum. People need to get educated. We need to get educated fast. And within a half an hour, an hour, I can teach people. Two years of MIT control systems, I teach people those concepts. Then I apply it, anyone can understand it. And then you say, oh, I gotta build a bottoms up movement. They have to get politically astute and then they have to go locally and act, not sit there on social media. They have to act locally, defy locally, be, do civil obedience locally, but with knowledge on how to build a movement. And the Senate campaigns expanded to the movement for truth, freedom and health and they can find it on Vias and Victor A. Shiva, vashiva.com. So people can sign in, they can get access to a bunch of videos. If they want to take a course and become a truth, freedom, health leader, I offer a full scholarship there, but we want people to make a commitment that they'll study, that they'll get certified, that they'll go do activities on the ground. So go to VA Shiva, Victory America Shiva, VA Shiva.com. So anyway, Sri, so that gives a understanding. We put that video together because it was really to give people an understanding that there is a, you know, I think what's happened over the last 50 years is everyone thinks that they deserve a trophy, right? There's a lack of understanding that if you want to build a bridge, you have to, you have to understand civil engineering, right? You can't just go build a bridge. If you want to build an airplane, maybe you'll get lucky, but most, until we understood Bernoulli's principle, we couldn't do that. And there are fundamental principles on how the universe operates. And so when I intersect the work on engineering systems theory, what Indian systems of medicine were really based on and political systems theory, we've put that together. So there's nothing like this exists anywhere on the planet. If it did, I wouldn't be doing this. But I think to me, it's a, been a long journey to systems. And our goal right now is to broadly educate people all over the globe. And one of the things we do is, you know, we've made these people can come in and take the classes. We now have trained close to hundreds of other people who teach the class for me. And they learn when they teach. It's called the dual pedagogy model. There was a professor at MIT called Dick Larson who came up with this model where when you teach, you actually learn. And there's a, a model that we've created a video that you can, you can literally take the course and learn how to teach it to people tomorrow. And when you're teaching, you learn. So we're literally taking 50 years of control systems knowledge that you would have to learn and engaging people to teach that fast. And then one of the things we do is we get people on the ground. So people will take a banner, people will hand out flyers. So they now they're learning the activism piece because without that, it's just all theory. They'll just think every, you know, this argue politics all day. But when they meet other human beings, they get off social media, they hand out a card. So we go train people, like for example, on the vaccine issue, we don't talk pro-vax, anti-vax. We say, look, the real issue is the right medicine for the right person at the right time. And that's about, that's where you get to public health. So we, our goal is to take people out of the realm of pro and anti, left and right, Republican and Democrat. So to me, that's ultimately the way that we're gonna win on any one of these issues go back to fundamental principles, systems principles. Ukraine and Russia, for example, 
you can see the level of confusion. You have the left attacking members of the left, the right attacking members of the right. And you have all this confusion. And But when you really separate, if you take a systems approach, you can really figure out what the real issues are. The real issues are that prior to 2020, and I just did a video on this, that there were close to 100 million people protesting all over the world against corruption, against, you know, attack on working people. And then the pandemic comes and that disappears. Then the election, that disappears. And now they, now the elites are using another war where they went and poked the bear in Russia. You know, there's no reason to go even touch Ukraine. It's been very well established. No one should even be going in there. But when you take a systems approach, you find out that the goal of everyday working people is truth, freedom, and health. That's what a control system teaches you. The opposition, the the disturbance rejection, there's power, profit, and control. And you can see the essence of those in power is to always divide people up. That's what we call in control systems, create a disturbance. So we have made this in a very objective, beautiful way that people can learn this. And that, and then we have embedded this like an operating system. So those people who get it can get it. Otherwise people waste 20% of their, 20 years of their life you know, being in the Democratic Party, going to the Republican Party, joining BJP, going to Congress, whatever they do, right? But they don't have this fundamental systems understanding. So they'll wake up one night, hopefully, too, unfortunately, too late. And they said, wow, th there are real problems. And I could have learned those real problems using this North Star understanding to help me solve it. And that's what we've done here. It's a powerful way of going beyond left and right. Wonderful, uh, Dr. Shiva. So you've also explained to us why someone should take this course. And uh, it's really fascinating because uh, we only have a limited time that we are on Earth and we need to make that thing as fulfilling as possible. Also leave the Earth in a, as a better place than what we came upon. And uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Viewers, do like, share and subscribe to our channel and do go to vashiva.com. He puts out some excellent videos and, and uh, I can't say enough good things about uh, Dr. Shiva. Uh, and, and, and Dr. Shiva, more power to you, sir. And we'll be uh, staying in touch and we'll be again talking about something very interesting. There's always stuff to talk to you. Whenever I call you or when you call me, there's always something new happening. So you are a, a fount of information and knowledge. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Yeah, namaskar. Thank you. Thank you.